pushing that excite me or frighten me. But before we do that, I want to give you just a very quick overview of the 50-year history of Tyndale House Publishers. My father, Kenneth Taylor, was the director of Moody Press all through the 1950s. He was also a successful Moody Press author. Go ahead, Jim. He wrote uh, books for parents to read to their children during family devotions, books such as The Bible in Pictures for Little Eyes. Some of you may recognize this book because it's been translated into, I think, more than 100 languages around the world. My father was one of the founders of the Christian Booksellers Association, and he attended the CBA convention. That convention is now called ICRS, but it used to be called the CBA. He attended that convention each year on behalf of Moody Press. But 50 years ago, in 1962, at the CBA convention in July, Ken Taylor wasn't in the Moody Press booth. He was across the room at a little five-foot booth that was labeled Tyndale House Publishers. Ken's bookstore friends were curious and perhaps a little confused. Ken, why aren't you in the Moody Press booth? And what is Tyndale House Publishers? Ken responded, my newest book is called Living Letters and I've decided to publish it myself. I'm using the name Tyndale House for my little company. Here, take a look at Living Letters. It's a new translation of the New Testament epistles. And a number of stores ordered copies of Living Letters. By the end of the convention, Ken went home with orders for about 800 copies of Living Letters. As Jim mentioned, I was 11 years old at that time, and my sisters and I helped ship those copies of Living Letters out to bookstores across the country and some copies overseas. In fact, my bedroom in this old house in Wheaton, Illinois, west of Chicago, was the first shipping room for Tyndale House Publishers. In uh, my father's autobiography, he tells this story about those early days of living letters. He says, I waited with great anticipation for the stores to sell these books they had ordered at the convention and to reorder more. I waited and waited and waited. When I got home each evening from my work at Moody, I inquired eagerly whether my store, whether any stores had reordered books, but the answer was always no. Then one evening, I came home from work and found a letter from a bookstore that had ordered five copies at the convention. I eagerly tore open the envelope. It was a reorder for one copy. <laughs> that was pretty faint encouragement. But during that same week, Moody Bookstore sold four copies, so they reordered, as did four other stores, and gradually my spirits lifted. Sometime during the next year, Billy Graham got excited about living letters. His business manager, George Wilson, called my dad to say that the Billy Graham Association wanted to offer living letters as a free giveaway on television. Why don't we back up just a second there, Jim, to the previous slide. And can, do we, can we get better sound on that? Uh, Victor. 